All right, on to the sixth and final wines. Hopefully you're still with us and you haven't drunk all the wine you've been given so far because there was only a minimum of six people and you're on the fifth, you're about to go on to the sixth. That's quite a lot of wine. So if you are still listening to me, that is great. We are looking at uh, the Grand Reserva Faustino uh, Rioja, basically is what we're talking about. So Faustino is a producer, been around for about 100 years. The name Faustino came about in about the 1950s, is what we're talking about. Very unique bottle, uh, kind of weird. Most people think it's ugly, but I can assure you the wine inside is amazing. And the reason why we're doing a Rioja Grand Reserva last um, is my philosophy has always been you do a the oldest wines, which hopefully are the best, last. That's the rationale. Because I can assure you, uh, and you probably because you just tasted it, that Syrah is going to be much fuller and bigger than this type of wine. But with that sort of power and fullness of something like the Syrah, this one has the complexity, um, that sort of uh, characteristics or that mellow tannins, lovely fruit, maybe some aged fruit, some youthful fruit, all in. So therefore you just got more complexity and elegance in it. And so that's why you always want to finish on, I believe, that type of wine is what we're looking at. So jumping into uh, Faustino, largest producer of, or largest exporter of Gran Reserva Rioja in the world. So this is a large establishment of making these types of styles of wine. What is Gran Reserva? There is a system in uh, Spain, uh, Rioja is the most famous one of doing this, is to put the words Gran Reserva or Reserva or Crianza, there's a minimum aging requirements is what we're talking about. So when we look at Crianza, it's two years, one in bottle and one in barrel. When you get to Reserva, it's a minimum of one year in barrel and then a minimum of two years in bottle. When you get to Grand Reserva, which is this one, it's two years in barrel minimum and three years in bottle. This was just released this March. Uh, the previous vintage of this was 2005. What's that telling us is this is 11 years old now and the minimum requirements are five. So what you can begin to see is the better quality producers are generally creating a Grand Reserva which is ready to be drunk now and still has the ability to age for another three or four years is what we're talking about. So they're not rushed out early, which to me often means that Rioja and Grand Reservas are some of the greatest values on the marketplace. This is what, 34 bucks. I love this wine. Uh, you try and find a Napa Cab, a Bordeaux wine, a Burgundy, anything else which is 11 years old and is under 75 bucks, good luck. So that's why I love these, is what we're talking about. Also, when you look at the, um, the Grand Reserva style, uh, you are predominantly using Tempranillo. So Tempranillo is a dominant grape in Rioja. There is also Graciano and Wazuelo. The other ones, Graciano, uh, are both of those. I look at Graciano and Wazuelo, as being sort of like adding herbs and spices or salt and pepper to your dish. There's a percentage point of each of these maximum and it just adds some complexity and lifts a lot of those sort of fruit characteristics is the way I'd look at doing that. Here's where we are. Also, when you look at Rioja, there's three different regions. This is from Rioja Alavesa. That's a very prestigious region. You're on limestone soils, chalky limestone soils. You're up at about 1500 feet as well. So you would have the elevation. So you're getting this lovely sort of mature time on the grapes for ripening with that high elevation coming down off, if I remember correctly, the Sierra Cantabrias. Also what that means is you're getting that cooling air coming down, therefore it gives you the ability to retain acidity a much longer. And to make great wines with ageability, and again, like I say, this one's 29, the previous one was 2005, what you're seeing here is it has to be great for that vintage. There is no six, seven, and eight. It was released 05 and then you jumped to 09. You don't make Grand Reserves every year. You need to have ideal conditions, awesome vintage, great wine at the end of the day, or great grapes to make great wine is what we're looking at. And so Tempranillo has the ageability, so it has the tank structure. It also has that lovely acidity as well. So what you're looking at is rarely do they make Grand Reserves, but then especially you need to have lovely fruit so you can have that ageability. So that's what makes them just as special, I suppose, or really special. This one, uh, this particular one, the 2009, for me, it does have, it's kind of a really intriguing wine. It has the freshness of youth. So it has that lovely sort of zip of acidity and sort of fresh fruit flavors, but it also has those mature characteristics. And when we tasted it the other day, I was personally getting some sort of almost stewed fruit from bottle age, 
but also some dried fruit from uh, the barrel aging is what you're looking at. So for me, you get this really interesting intersection between that sort of almost youthful characteristic, which is probably imaginary because it's 11 years old, um, but also with that lovely sort of age characteristic with those classic sort of dried fruits, freaks, etc., etc., and just a lovely long length. This to me is really special, and like I say, for 34 bucks, an 11-year-old wine, um, coming from Rioja Grand Observer, I think it's beautiful.